What's good, Crown family? Hope you're having a good day today. If not, I hope this video bring a little light to your day. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're checking out NBA legend. Explain how crazy good Larry Bird was. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. Original video link will be in the description so y'all can check it out. If you want to go check out the original content creator, let's get it. The man from Indiana who gave us an 80s to remember by lighting up a battle between the Celtics and the Lakers will forever be heralded as one of the players who saved basketball. Bird and Magic's coast-to-coast -coast war and jaw-dropping styles gave the NBA the boost it needed before the emergence of Michael Jordan. But for Bird with three titles, two finals MVPs, and three consecutive MVP seasons, some forget just how Sheesh. good he really was. Today we look at NBA players explaining how crazy good Larry Bird was in his prime. Before we get into all that, if you want to win a PS5 with NBA 2K22 and Madden NFL 22 included, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. When speaking of the NBA's greatest of all time, there's always five or ten guys that hit the list. Each carries a different generation. Facts. From 50s Bill Russell to 60s Wilt Chamberlain or 70s Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 80s Magic Johnson, 90s Michael Jordan, 2000s Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant to today's LeBron James. Some get Sheesh. overlooked when they... Yeah, I, I gotta go back and watch like highlight videos on all of these legends, man. I, I really want to see, you know, just the highlight videos and stuff like that. Y'all let me know in the comments what videos I need to be checking out. Shouldn't. For example, Tim Duncan. And others get left behind because of the lack of titles like Charles Barkley. What Charles. happens when all these players talk of another great as if he was like no other? Larry Bird was lauded by most of these legends, because he was one of them too. He was consistent, tough, offensively masterful, and one of the first big guys to shoot many three-point shots. LeBron James spoke candidly Ooh, in an interview crazy about shot. how he was one of the few guys ever to win a three-point contest with a warm-up shirt on. LeBron referring to the time Larry won his third consecutive three-point contest. James continued, For young guys that don't know him, you know, they, they think of Larry Bird as a jump shooter. Uh, but he was so much more than that. He was a passer. He averaged double-digit rebounds. Um, he definitely took charges. And, um, you know, he's a straight-up complete basketball player. And me as a small forward. Later in his career. I love how LeBron, like, show his respect to all of the up. I mean, the legends before him, man. Paying respect, man. And it's also see so many, so dope to see, like, other athletes talk about how good Larry Bird is, you know? LeBron adapted his game to the new way of basketball, which was a charge led by the Golden State Warriors in shooting more from behind the arc. LeBron was considered a big guy, but began shooting more threes and no doubt was heavily influenced by the fact that Larry Legend had already achieved this feat in the 80s. In another interview, when asked about his top three of all time, LeBron put Larry Bird firmly in there with MJ and Dr. J. Three. Uh, yeah, Larry Bird. Dr. J. Michael. Shaq had That's a very fire. different opinion on Larry initially. He said he disliked Bird because he was jealous. He thought, how could this regular looking guy do everything? I never really had a chance to play against Larry Bird, but I, I actually used to hate Larry Bird. I, 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 I hated him. Shaq soon realized as he grew older and wiser that despite getting the luck of the Irish with the Celtics, Larry made his own luck when it came to shooting the ball. Shaq, at 7'1", of course, had a completely different style of game at the time. He was built to the max and used brute force to impose his will on the defense and rack up the points, blocks, and rebounds. Shaq was also faster than most give him credit for, particularly in the early part of his career. O'Neal the rebound, now the Magic with a final shot chance. O'Neal runs the floor, takes it off! Bird was notoriously slow. Bro, imagine trying to defend Shaq and seeing him come towards the rim, bro. I would just move out of the way. I'm just move out of the way, bro. Oh, which was all the more testament to his skill set. But his basketball IQ was just on a different planet. He once sank a shot from behind the backboard, which O'Neal chalked down to a fluke following a bet with his friend. Sam Vincent to Bird. Yeah, this shot is crazy. Insane. The Shaq legend. never really got the chance to play against Larry Bird, which is unfortunate, because I don't think it would have taken him so long to recognize greatness. On the other hand, six-time NBA champion Kareem Abdul-Jabbar battled Bird on numerous occasions while playing with the Showtime Lakers. Bird got the better of him in the 1984 finals, and took another two in a decade that was largely dominated by the purple and gold. Mm. Kareem spoke about how Larry might have been the best he had played against and said, How good was Michael Bird? Jordan? People, I don't think people, people, people look, look at him and think, yeah, oh, he's a white guy, slow guy. The chubby white guy, he wore <laughs> us out, man. You know, because he just, this was, this muscle here, the one between his ears, Yeah, that was his best, you know, because he, he made the three-pointers and he had assists and rebounded, steals, 
he was always at the right place at Crazy. the right time on the court. You know, one of the great players. I, you know, I, I had the opportunity to play. I love seeing legends like show their respect to other players. It's like even though y'all were probably rivals, you know, still showing respect to Larry Bird, letting you know this man was one of the hardest persons I didn't play. You know, against you know. <laughs> Eleven-time All-Star Charles Barkley, a regular season MVP during a star-filled '90s, was once asked, "Are you better than Bird?" And he took a long pause before answering, which is very telling. Am I better than Bird? Oh man, that's a great question. Most great players respond immediately with how they think they're the best because you have to have that kind of mentality in order to get to the Facts. top. Instead, Barkley answered, I'm a better rebounder. I'm probably a better defender. Mm. He's a better shooter, obviously. You know, a, a lot of people talk about who's better. But you have to think, you have to have that mentality. No, no, you know, you know, you know. You know. Uh, like, I, if, I think, you know, it's, it's a team game. Mm -hmm. I think deep down he That's knew true. that Bird was a better player. And for someone as good as Chuck to be stumped like that in an interview shows Facts. you how heavy the weight of Larry Bird's legacy was. Former teammate Kevin McHale also references how unreal Bird was to play with. McHale was Bird's right-hand man while playing with Boston, claiming the Sixth Man of the Year award twice, along with Ooh, seven All-Star appearances. His story of a specific Detroit game is fascinating. There was a bit of time left on the clock and we had beaten Detroit and I just scored 56 and I'm walking off the court and Larry said, where are you going? I said, I'm done. I said, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Larry goes, don't do it, man. Cause when I get that hot, I'm not coming out of the game. I'm a week dying. later, he got that hot. He looked at me at about 50 points and he looked at me and said, I told you. The pair would go on to win three titles together and McHale would continue to tell stories that live on in Celtics folklore forevermore. A highlight being a throwback from Bird's brutal trash talk at a game in Phoenix. We have a play, out of bounds play, I'm taking it out, and um, Larry says, I'm going to bust off the play, and I'm just going to come out, and I'm going to shoot a three, and I'm like, we're down two. I'm like, no, don't do that. I'm like, just, let's shoot a two, please. Go to the hole, try to get fouled. Let's just get into overtime, see if we can't win this game. And Larry says, no, nah, I'm just going to bust a three on him. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I love that. He tells the, tells the Phoenix bench, um, <laughs> tells the coaches, yeah, I'm just fixing to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. <laughs> no way. And he gets the ball, jumps out, busts the play, comes out, gets the ball at the slot, shoots the ball. As the ball's in the air, he kind of turns towards the Phoenix bench and yells, told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, bro. That's one thing I love about Verb, man. He would literally tell the opposing team or tell, you know, his team might be like, I'm about to do this. Go on the court and do it. Like, and then just, like, he he didn't care, bro. And he, and he knew he could back up whatever he's saying, bro. That's that's one thing. Like, you got to be able to back up what you're saying, especially when you're a trash talker, bro. You, you got to be able to back that up. You can't be a trash talker and then be out here being trash, you know? <laughs> Larry's mental game was such that he could just open up any team and tear them apart. He would use psychological warfare on a regular basis. Players speak of his toughness not because of his size or physicality, but because of his mind. He would impose his will on the opposition and could force them off their game just as much as he could switch on his. A mastermind at trash talk tactics, Larry Bird will forever go down in history as one of the greatest trash talkers of all time. And in the 80s, that mattered. With players such as Bill Lambier, Hakeem Olajuwon, Magic Johnson, and the eventual emergence of Michael Jordan, Bird did what was necessary in order to gain that mental edge that took him over the top. I wish they, I wish they had mics like they do now. Don't they have like mics where you could like actually hear what they say? Like imagine hearing like clips of what Bird used to tell some of these players. I mean, some of the players say it, but I wish I could like actually hear him saying it. I can imagine him saying, hey, bro, I'm about to shoot a three on you. Watch. Shoots the three. And <laughs> like, bro, come on, man. That's crazy. James Worthy, the 1988 Finals MVP, simply stated that Larry was trash talking all the time, but the problem was he could back it up. Thanks. He, he could back it up. So uh, <laughs> when you're arrogant and you can back it up, you're not arrogant. You're just good. And, uh, and Larry was good. Even Warther's former teammate Magic Johnson spoke on the fact that he had a real dislike for Larry Bird as far back as their college playing days for the very reason that Larry would constantly get the better of him. Johnson claimed in a recent interview during a press buildup for the Broadway play about the pair that after he beat Larry in the NCAA championship game in 1979, the most watched college basketball game ever, by the wow. time he got to the Lakers, they were 0-8 to the Celtics. You had to 
hate the Celtics to beat them because bef when I got here, we were 0 for, I think, 8. And then the first time against the Celtics in the in championship series. And then we lost that in 84. That made us 0 for 9, I believe. And later it's quoted as... It's kind of crazy. I don't mean to stop it so much, but it's kind of crazy how... Like, I look at, at Magic as a businessman, more of an athlete. Like I, I, I know I wasn't, I didn't witness him play basketball. Like I know him as the businessman he is now. Like it's kind of crazy, man. The saying, when I played, Larry Bird was the only one I feared. Not bad when hearing it from a five-time champion and one of the true great basketball players of all time. At the 2019 NBA Awards, Johnson received the NBA Lifetime Achievement Award, but it was shared with guess who? Larry Bird. Bird was simply the king of talking the talk, then actually going out and walking the walk. Facts. Listen, man. Retirement is great for you because you've never talked this long. <laughs> Dominique Wilkins recounts one of the most famous games where Larry Bird promised Kevin McHale he was going to break McHale's record against Atlanta. Wilkins said, He got so hot in that game that you talk about that patented step back. He was doing That's that crazy. step back and he switched it to his left hand three separate times in that game. He hit a three. He was scoring anywhere on the floor that Ooh, he wanted. Is this when the I bench mean, was, was giving each other five? The <laughs> bench was giving each other five. So did you get in a fight with them after the game? Forget, I, forget Larry. Did well, you beat it, anybody on the bench? Because when you're giving five, he's scoring on me. Yes. Every one of those you're guys on my team. got fined 3000 okay. No way. <laughs> Larry's legend lives on because of the greats that want to tell them. The reason there's a list of top 10 players who consistently call Bird their toughest opponent or one of their all-time greats is because Larry himself is a Forever fire. Larry is a top 10 baller of all time. His style doesn't matter when his skill sinks the opposition. Because above all, the opposition will remember. They'll remember the steals, the shots, the clutch plays, and the trash talk. They'll remember the bird from the early 80s, not from the early 90s. The Larry who stepped out on the court in his warm-up jacket and made Michael Jordan recoil in envy. MJ announced, He ain't took off his top yet. Yeah, no, yeah. I see what he took off his top. Well, when Bird did, it was all business. He may as well have taken a mop and bucket to the floor because he was about to clean up. He was an impetuous and never relenting opponent that took the life from anyone who stepped onto his battlefield. The consensus is a resounding stamp of legendary status for the man who will forever go down in the history books as one of the greatest ever players, and arguably the greatest ever Celtic to grace the court. Man. What did you think of Larry Bird in his prime? Man, just, just like seeing these highlight videos of Bird, seeing how other athletes, other legends talk about Bird, man, it's just such a beautiful thing to see, man, to see that while he was on a different team, you know, from them. You know, they still had respect for him because how uh, how good he was. Now, if he was just a trash talker and, you know, he ain't really, you know, could back up what he was saying, you know, I'm pretty sure people won't respect him like they do. It's just like he, he, he did those things and he was a team player. His assists, you know, were crazy. You know, like he could he could back up, you know, his, his shot was crazy, you know, like, come on, man. Imagine going out on the court and, and, and winning, what is the three point uh, game, <laughs> you know, with your warm up on. That's crazy, bro. Imagine like I'll be on the sideline pissed off like, bro, he ain't even took off his jacket yet. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> But man, holy Let me know in the comments what other Larry Bird videos Y'all want to see me do And I try to get to them as soon as possible Until next time, smack the subscribe I'm going to throw a video up of one of the Larry Bird videos I reacted to y'all Make sure y'all go check it out Until next time, deuces